Hey guys, Dr. Davin Lim, Board Certified Laser Dermatologist. Today we'll be talking about 10, yes, absolutely right, 10 ways to help reduce oily skin. So today, um, I'm going to put laser last, okay? So chances are you'll never see me to treat oily skin because of the fact that I'm a laser dermatologist. So it's nine medical ways over laser. So you can see the product over here in the product guide of which I will tell you how to reduce oil. Now, oil is done for oil is there for a reason. Uh, you don't get oily hands, you don't get oily feet, but you get oily face and you get oily scalp. And the reason being is because oil lives in the pilosebaceous unit. In other words, the oil gland. So it's called a sebaceous gland, which produces oil. And that is located obviously on your face and in your scalp. And that's why you've got, at the end of the day, blemishes, breakouts, acne, pimples, blackheads, whiteheads, oily skin and oily faces. So the reason why that happens is because of genetics. Some, in some cases, um, some races, for example, um, patients of ethnic origin, we have oilier skin than someone who's usually fair. It's not an exception, but it's just who we are genetically. And it's modified by the environment as well, including makeup, including diet. And I'll give you tips in regards to how to actually control those. So let's start with the 10 basic rules. First of all, uh, it's a cleanser. Now it's very important that you cleanse, not overtly, but just twice a day. The reason being is that your, your oil gland works through what's known as a biofeedback. If you clean up your face and your face actually feels um, dry, your skin automatically tells the oil gland, hey, let's produce, this, produce more oil. So you, if you clean your face six times a day, you're just going to keep on producing more oil and oil and oil and oil. So you only clean twice a day, but the cleanser you use is very important. So you have to use a gentle cleanser, but also an active cleanser. One thing which I like to use or I like to tell patients is to actually use one of this. It's called Neutrogena Oil-Free Acne Wash. So it contains a lipophilic, in other words, it actually goes straight to the oil gland, beta hydroxy acid or salicylic acid. Okay, so one of the cleansers you can use is a gentle BHA, nothing more than 2% salicylic acid. You can also use a tea tree oil because that is also lipophilic. So that's number one, proper cleanser. Number two, a moisturizer. A moisturizer is extremely important because we're gonna use a light moisturizer. There's no point using a heavy moisturizer and the moisturizer is done to actually counteract what you've just stripped off or you've washed off, basically your oil. So you want to trick your skin into, into thinking that it's got a nice coat. So you use a light moisturizer. So what moisturizer do I use? Well, you know what? I've been using um, a lot of products from The Ordinary recently. So that is a good moisturizer, a light moisturizer. As you know, I like La Roche-Posay as well, um, but certainly any light moisturizer will be fine. And you've got to use that twice a day. Uh, twice or three times a day. Okay, a light moisturizer. So that's tip number two. Okay, tip number three, toners. Now, this I know this is always going to be a controversy. Controversy in regards to toners. In the old-fashioned days, toners used to contain alcohol, and they're called astringents, and they basically strip your skin. So basically, when you're trying to control oil, you're cleansing, you're stripping uh, with, with with the toner, you're reapplying with the moisturizer and then you reapply and then you cleanse again and then you strip and you cleanse again. So that's not a good idea. Um, so if you've got an old fashioned toner, uh, certainly cut that out because you'll see that by protecting your skin with a moisturizer, it's actually better than a toner. But certainly nowadays with the Korean skin skincare, we have learned a lot in, um, in I guess, in the Western world of how to actually use um, moisturizing toners um, in the appropriate manner. And these do not contain alcohol or astringents. So certainly, tip number three is reconsider your toner. If you're gonna use a toner, use the proper one. Tip number four is to use vitamin A. So vitamin A, a can help actually decrease oil production. So it can slow down the production of sebum uh, in your pilosebaceous units. So you can buy over-the-counter retinol, for example, uh, retinol 1.0 from Neutrogena, or you can actually buy, from what I understand, the US nowadays, you can buy different. So you can buy this over the counter, over the counter. it's called Adapalene. So it's a generation three retinoid, okay? So you can buy everything from different to Stevel A, right? Um, 
and even trip knowing and retrieve. So in Australia, you do need a prescription from that and you do need to see a medical dermatologist, not a procedural dermatologist for all of these creams. Uh, and then it, this is right out there for those of you guys who actually have oil production, which just, you've tried everything uh, and I mean everything, uh, certainly this can help, which is basically Oritane or Accutane. Am I a fan of this? No, I'm not. That's why I'm a laser dermatologist, not a medical dermatologist. But yes, this can actually help reduce oil production. And it's not the same dose as what you take when you're having acne. You only need to be in one to two tablets per day. Um, obviously, there are a lot of side effects with this, and that's why we, I don't actually use it myself. But does it work? It, of all the treatments, it's probably the best medically. Um, but yes, there are side effects. Okay, so tip number five is your diet. So as we know, um, nowadays, oil production as well as acne can be diet related. It's that diet plays an important role in the development of oil production as well as acne, and that's via IGF-1. So it's basically insulin-like growth factor one. And that's been proven in many scientific journals, including the American Academy of Dermatology journals, uh, as well as numerous international publications. So one of the trigger factors include dairy. The other thing are foods which are refined. So basically sugars, because they modulate the IGF-1 receptor, which actually, IGF-1 levels, which actually modulate the receptors within your um, oil glands. So they can produce more oil. So if you're one of those who have tr trigger factors for foods, cutting down um, refined foods um, and eating basically healthy foods can help. So more on the diet guide, um, on, I, I think I've done some links in the past in regards to diet and um, acne. So certainly keeping out of dairy products can actually help in some but not all cases. Tip number six, AHAs, alpha hydroxy acids. You can buy AHAs through um, a cream, so something like um, Neostrata AHA uh, 10 or 15 and you can dilute that and you can use that as a cream. So use that both as a moisturizer and a cream and glycolic acid itself, using glycolic acid peels, can reduce oil production in some cases. So it's not permanent, but it's only during the times of use. Certainly if you have oily skin, you can incorporate that with your vitamin A's, your A, B's and C's of your skincare regime, but also add AHA's as tolerated. So that's tip number six. Uh, seven. You guys, sorry, you girls, um, ladies, you would know this. It's blotting paper, good old fashioned blotting paper. And you can buy this, it's really cheap. It works out to be about five or 10 cents at the most per sheet. So at the end of the day, if you do find yourself um, a little bit oily, usually about three, four o'clock in the afternoon, you can use good old blotting paper. I just use this, you can see how much oil I have. Reason being is I'm Asian, so we have a lot more oil production. So. As the name suggests, you don't wipe it or smear it. You don't want to irritate your skin. You basically want to blot. And basically just pat. And you can use both sides of the paper. And like I said, for five to 10 cents um, a day, you can have much less oil. Okay, so you can see how much oil absorption there is on the paper with for me just blotting just then, heaps. Um, and uh, is there any one paper that's better than the other? Is Korean skincare better than Japanese skincare? I don't know. Um, it just works. Um, so guys, blotting paper. It's, I guess, a secret for guys, but for girls, I'm sure you know it. And um, it's been well preached. Okay, so tip number eight, um, anti-hormone medications. And this only applies to females. The reason why your oil glands are active is because we have hormones and the hormones can either be in excess or you have very sensitive oil glands and the hormones bind to the oil glands. So one way to actually decrease that is to reduce the amount of hormones or reduce the hormones binding to the oil glands. So for you girls out there, for you ladies I should say, probably correct and use the right terminology, there are medications out there which can help. For example, um, oral contraceptive pills which contain cypretan acetate. So that's what you're looking for, cypretan acetate. So in Australia, there's things like Diane, Estelle, um, which contain cypretan acetate, two milligrams. Certainly, if you see an endocrinologist, it's gonna increase that to 50 milligrams a day, but often the pill can help. Uh, the other important aspect of a pill is something called drospirinone, which you'll find in something called Yaz or Yasmin, okay? Um, so that's prescription only contraceptive pill. 
Another old trick which dermatologists use is good old fashioned spironolactone. It works a treat. So how this works is it doesn't affect your hormones. It actually stops your hormones binding to your oil lamp. So this acts somewhere in the middle and stops that binding. Okay, which means your oil gland is not so active. So that is tip number uh, eight, is good old um, hormonal control. Tip number nine. Well, tip number nine is actually um, makeup um, or a mattifying gel. So this is the most well known, it's called OC8. In Australia it sells for $60 but I remember um, as a dermatologist doing medical dermatology a long time ago it used to sell for as little as $8 to $10 in the US before it actually got famous. So mattifying gel um, OC8 works really well. Uh, La Roche-Posay also provides one called Effleclar Matte and the mattifying gels which actually you put in your face so instead of being shiny they actually uh, absorb oil. Makeup wise, certainly you can use a mattifying makeup. Okay guys, so now we are in our lasers and lights. Uh, what devices do I use? So we can use blue light. I know in the US a lot of people use Omnilux blue, but I prefer to use the 633 nanometer. There's a reason for that is because red light penetrates deeper than blue. And where are these oil glands located? They are located deep in the skin, so I prefer red. So you can see we can use it as a standalone treatment and we can deliver red light in the spectrum of 630 to 633 nanometers and we can deliver that over a period of let's say 10 minutes and that can make the skin less oily. Another trick is to actually add this which is basically a activator. It's called methyl amino levonic acid or MALA or even ALA which is basically a porphyrin that gets concentrated in the oil glands and then we use the light to activate um, this, which actually helps. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> which, so there you go. That's as easy as that. Treatment's over in 10 minutes. So basically, this activates the um, porphyrins, which are concentrated in the red light. And it's as easy as that. And if we can restart it again, um, we can show you how easy it is. And there's no pain associated with this, with red light treatment, but certainly if you're using this, yes, it can have a little bit of pain associated with it because um, we're actually destroying the oil glands with um, MALA. So that's another uh, way we can use to actually, another method we can use to actually decrease the amount of uh, oil production. Is this permanent? Uh, the answer is that it can be, uh, but in most situations, I say, uh, look, if we can get remission of a couple of months, that, that would be great. Um, that's one of my ways to actually reduce oil production without the need for medication. And once again, it's a very safe treatment. We're not using radiation. We're using one wavelength of light. Thanks for that, guys. And uh, let's move on. So, look at all these girls here. Um, these are all my nurses and you can see they're actually hard at work on, on, a, on a, what day is it today? This is my laser day. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to treat, <laughs> we're going to treat one of my nurses, Kira, with um, a carbon peel. It's called a Hollywood peel. Um, it's called a carbon peel and I'll show you how it's done shortly. <laughs> Okay, guys, a little bit of fun for a for, for a Thursday afternoon. Okay, guys, so what we can do now is uh, use our various lasers, including our um, Q-switch lasers. So we can use a Pico laser or we can use a Nano laser. And what this laser does is it targets a chromophore, and the chromophore is basically carbon. So the carbon gets absorbed in the oil glands, and that's the target to hit. So the longer the absorption rate, in other words, the longer you leave it, it should, ideally it should be left on for three to four hours. Um, and the carbon gets absorbed into the oil glands and we're actually hitting the carbon with a laser that explodes the oil glands and basically decreases the amount of oil production. So here we go. So the snapping noise you hear basically is the carbon which is exploding. So much like ink, as in ink from a tattoo, we're using carbon as the target. But we're not looking at the carbon on the surface. What we're aiming for is the carbon which has been absorbed 
into the oil glands. And like I said, ideally, um, this should be left on for several hours. Uh, certainly, if it's left on for a few minutes, um, you get minimal absorption. Um, so it's best left on in this setting uh, for several hours. And this can be used to treat acne as well. So this is also called the Hollywood peel. In the second pass with this laser, you can see, when we're doing the second pass with this laser, there is no chromophore. So there's less of, an, of a snap. Um, but what we're doing is that we're getting the residual amount of carbon, which is in the uh, oil gland itself. So what happens basically is that the oil gland literally explodes uh, and we're decreasing the amount of oil glands and hence oil production. Once again, this is not permanent. Uh, it gives you a good reduction over a period of weeks. You do need several treatments and um, yes, it may be recurrent. But this is another way of which we use um, lasers to actually decrease oil production. The great thing about this about laser and light treatment, um, zero side effects. So unlike taking Accutane or anti-hormone medications, this is a drug-free way of actually decreasing oil production. So that's it from me when it comes to my tricks from using lasers to decrease oil production, guys. So guys, I hope you liked that um, short segment on 10 ways to actually help reduce oil production. And right at the end is lasers and lights. Um, but remember, it's always medical over lasers in this situation. Um, lasers do have their advantage because of the fact that it has no side effects compared to drugs such as Accutane. But the flip side is that drugs such as spironolactone as anti-hormones or um, Accutane or isotretinoin, um, they're more predictable in their response, um, but they've got to be monitored and you've got to use them safely. Um, guys, please like, share, subscribe, and by all means, comment. Um, I do one educational video, non-sponsored, one educational video every Saturday morning, Brisbane time. I'll see you same time, same place next week, and please hit that subscribe button. Thanks, guys. Catch you then. Bye.